Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be having a little bit of fun with Active Directory again um, and setting up Active Directory on my Linux box, but instead of using password authentication, we will be using SSH authentication. So um, it's going to be pretty neat because, for the most part, most uh, you know, secure Linux systems, you probably want to use an SSH key as opposed to using a username and password. Um, but that can also get very tedious when you have multiple uh, servers and you have to manage all of them and, you know, creating users on every single one with an SSH key can get very tedious. So we're going to use AD to integrate that with um, our Linux box and make it so that we can use our public key um, to connect with it. So let's get started. All right. So I got a few Linux boxes. Um, we'll probably just use the one from one of my latest videos, um, which is the homepage one. Um, but what we want to do first is actually log in to our AD server so that we can do the AD configurations. Um, that's the terminal. We'll connect to our AD server here real quick when it RDPs eventually. Unless it's dead. It could be dead. That would be funny actually. This is this is how real live demos go, guys. You you uh you expect everything to be up, but it's not actually up. Um and then you go cry when, when it's not working. Um yeah, it's it's not even turned on. So like this is this is this is prime example video um live <laughs> doing it live. Um it's great. Uh so I'm powering it on right now, but we will uh Kind of go through the steps. So while that power is on, we will we can go through the um, steps to at least get something configured. So um, we'll log into my homepage server um, that we created in our last video, and we'll log in with a password because clearly I don't have any accounts or user things set up. Type in my password incorrectly the first time, so I can prove to you I can type it in correctly my second time. Um, but what we'll need to do here is actually configure a few things. Um, so the first thing that we will actually need to configure is actually point our DNS to the server that is my AD server. So in this case, it should be uh, uh, 172.16.1.25. So we'll save that and we will restart that. Um, eventually, I think my AD server should, should come back up. There we go. So we'll log into our AD server while that happens. Yes, of course, I want to connect to this. I trust it. Um, so that will load. And then this should come back up here pretty quick too. Um, unfortunately, the, the VM is running on my NAS, so it's not like the fastest VM. Um, so it, it will take a little bit to load. And we're going to wait for it to load still. All right, here we go. We got password prompts. Okay, so for this configuration on this on this side, what we'll do is now install a variety of packages, and this is the same thing that we did in our um, one of our original videos uh, on how to set up AD with a Linux box. So we'll need Realm D SSSD. Kerberos 5, Workstation, Samba, Common, Tools, Curve 5, Libs, Odd Job, Odd Job, MK Home Dirt, and Add CLI. So we'll install all those, which will essentially allow us to be able to connect to the domain um, AD server and uh, register the domain. So while that installs, we'll go back to our AD server now that it is up and available. And we will actually go look at Active Directory here. So for most of you guys, you probably have, um, if you follow my Active Directory, we already have a user created in here in this zone. Um, so you can see we got users and whatnot. What you want to do here is go to View and Advanced Features. From here, you go back to users and select the user that you want to associate a public key with. Um, double click on it, you get the whole you know properties of that user. Where we'll go is actually attribute editor, and then where it says alt security identities, we'll double click that, and then we will add the public key. So, um, 
Wow, this apparently doesn't want to work. <laughs> this is how demos go, guys. We 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 clearly we clearly don't don't want to work. Okay, why is it actually frozen? Yeah, Google works. Install the stuff, guys. Install. Um, there we go. For some odd reason, it's just really uh, slow. I need I need faster faster uh, <laughs> storage. But anywho, what we'll do is actually create um, an SSH key pair on here because I don't think I have one. Oh, I already do. Never mind. So I already have one, so I don't I, I don't actually need to um, cat dot ssh id rsa dot pub. Oh, this is what I get for running a Windows computer. I usually use a Mac, so I, I don't actually know. Um, we'll 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 go the we'll go the old fashioned way. We'll just open this notepad. <laughs> uh, open. Uh, me users. I'm running as an administrator. Dot SSH. All files. Uh, pub file. Open. Here we go. So what we'll do is copy that and paste it into our string editor. Um, so essentially, now in this, my alt security identities is associated with Dragon, the Dragon user. So we hit apply and okay. So from an Active Directory side, that is all you'll need to do. Um, so to for, for the user. Next, what we'll do, and hopefully everything installed. Okay, so everything now has installed. So we will now hook up our Linux box to the domain. So we'll do a realm discover, discover dragon.local. And you can see that it does see it and pick it up so we'll join the domain so we'll just join uh, we'll set up verbose so that we can kind of show you what it is and we will log in as the administrator user um, you should be able to log in as any user that has domain access so um, that should work but we'll just log in as the administrator because that's one of the accounts that I already have in there so that will essentially install all the stuff that you need and set up so that you can essentially access the machine. Um, the machine can access Active Directory. A few things that I like to do is first off set set up sudo. So essentially, I I like it so that um, all domain admins should be able to sudo um, domain admins. Um, Technically, you don't need this if you don't want to, but I find uh, being able to log in as root is very helpful for certain scenarios, especially if your software is running at root. So this line will essentially allow you to log in as a domain admin. Uh, well, log in and be able to sudo as, because you're a domain admin if, if you're in a domain admin group. Um, then we'll need to update the configuration, the SSSD configuration. Um, this is the essentially the configuration that tells you how um, to authenticate. So in this case, we'll set up and add services. We'll add SSH to the service. I personally like to not use the fully qualified domain name, so I, I'm going to set this to false, um, mainly because I like it to be able to just log in without saying, hey, oh, add dragon.logo. Just try the username at dragon.logo. Um, as well as the home directory just being home the username as opposed to home the username at dragon.local. Um, so those are like the few things I would change, but you also need to update and add LDAP user extra attributes equals ATL security identities and LDAP user SSH public key equals ALT security identities. This essentially says to you to um, grab the I, I alt uh, security identities tribute and use it as a public key here. And if I typed it in wrong, that would be kind of bad because then it wouldn't work. But we're going to pretend I typed it all right because I think I did. <laughs> um, then we'll stop SSSD. 
we will remove the SSSD cache um, just in case it did cache anything in between now and the uh, previous time. So we'll do that to RMRF and then we'll start SSSD back up. Alright, so now that we got that configured, essentially now you should be able to kind of um, authenticate, but you also need to still update the SSHD config to essentially allow the authorized keys commands. Um, authorized key command, so we're going to set this to use the SSSD one, so user bin SSS SSH authorized keys and the command user will be nobody and then we will restart sshd so from here now everything should be set up so that you can actually authenticate and log in um, as dragon um, because i i am using this pub uh key on this computer um, and on the server. So if I were to just SSH dragon at homepage.dragon.local. Oh, I said a passphrase on this. Is that the passphrase? That is a passphrase. Oh my God. Okay. I don't even remember setting it up. So I got it. I got it. So, <laughs> um, there you go. So you can see that with the, uh, SSH key that I had a passphrase on, um, I still logged in as dragon on this server. Um, so I can, you know, PWD home dragon is just home dragon. Otherwise, if you left, uh, the home directory with the at, uh, you know, dragon.local, it would append that too. Um, the other thing is I can sudo dash I, um, but, uh, I didn't set it up to do it with no password. So, so essentially that would still make me require a password. I would actually have to update this, um, to do the no password, so I would, oh, well, I typed it in wrong too, um, but I need, would need to set no pass D because I don't have a password set, it's just uh, AD authentication, so I would do that, and then I would be able to sudo dash I to become root, right? Um, so if, if you want it, you, you, you want to set it so that there's no password required to authenticate um, because you don't set a password, it's just the key. Um, technically, because Active Directory, there is a password set on that user, you could use the password, um, but I don't remember what the password is. So um, so essentially, you could have it how I said it before. Previously, if you want to still require a password after the login, um, just remove the no pass. Um, but if you want it to just be, the user be able to be able to sudo, add the no pass in there and your visual uh, VI sudo. So. But that is how you essentially hook up your Linux box to an Active Directory and use key-based authentication. So essentially, now if you hook up any Linux box and set it up such that any domain admin can log in or whatever group you want to log in, um, and there's a key attribute associated with that user, um, they would should be able to log in with that key in the future. So. That's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.